Hey guys, going on big in here. All right, so for this episode of Top Tier Tuesday, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go over the top 10. It was actually more than that, but I'm just going to focus on 10 for this video. Top 10 jeans for hypertrophy, right? And we're going to rank them based of importance, right? Because you guys seem to enjoy the videos on genetics and DNA and race and stuff like that, right? So we're going to use the standard criteria. I'm about to nod. Best of the best. Effing amazing. Second best. Okay, we're not going to use bad and pure garbage for today. Mainly because, you know, a lot of these genes are important. We're just going to rank them from most important to least important. So if you have any mutations in any of these genes, um, the bad mutations, of course, you're going to have a hard time putting on muscle. If you have the complete opposite, which is you have the good allele, the good version of the gene, then you're obviously going to put on muscle a lot faster than the average individual. Now, keep in mind, I have to repeat in this disclaimer every time, guys, having quote-unquote bad genetics does not mean you cannot build muscle, unless you have some fucked up disease, right? It does not mean you can't build muscle. It just means it will take you longer and you have to work a lot harder to reach the same level of muscularity as somebody with good genetics, right? So don't give up. Don't be like, oh my God, I have bad genetics. I just checked my genome and I have the shitty version of this gene, uh, so I'm not going to work out anymore. No, that's not how it works, right? It's not how the body works. It's just going to take you longer. Okay, and it takes a lot of genes to create a physique, not just one or two. So anyway, for this episode, we're gonna focus on these, and then I might do more more episodes because there's you know there's there's hundreds. So let's just focus on ten. I added an extra one to make it eleven. All right, so let's get started. Let's pick them at random. The vitamin D receptor gene. I'm gonna put that one at fucking amazing. If you have a negative mutation, if you have a bad mutation on this gene, you're going to have a hard time, not just with hypertrophy, but with strength, with recovery, with energy, with everything. Because, again, watch my video on sunlight. And, uh, you know, it's called sunlight is anabolic, something like that. But watch my video on that. And I go into details, right? Vitamin D is one of the most underrated things in the world. Because, once again, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. So if you're not getting enough vitamin D, you're not getting enough sun, especially if you're a dark nigga like myself. You, you, want, you want to be out there in the sun. Or... Uh, if you live uh, north of the equator, so in Europe, uh, North America, whatever, and, you know, the UVB rays are trash, then you have to supplement with vitamin D or you have to eat a lot of fish and stuff like that. But, yeah, if you have any mutations, any negative mutations on this gene, you're going to have a hard time putting on muscle and you're going to struggle with everything else in life. All right, next, myostatin. Obviously, you guys already know. You watch my videos on myostatin. I'm about to nut category, right? If you have the positive version of the myostatin related genes, keep in mind it's not just myostatin. That includes phylostatin, that includes active N two B receptor, that includes active N A. Right? If you have the good versions um, of those genes, meaning in you know in reverse, meaning myostatin is not working as well and it's not um, activating the active N two B receptor as well, you're gonna put on a lot of muscle a lot quicker than an average person. Meanwhile, if you have the working version of the gene, you guys already know from my videos, you fucked. So myostatin and all its related genes are in the I'm about to know category. Uh, next, we have uh, IL-6, right? And the look in 6, you guys already know, that's immune system related gene. So that's anything to do with your immune system. I want to put that in fucking amazing because the immune system is so underrated when it comes to hypertrophy. Everyone thinks immune system, that's for disease and sickness and viruses. No, motherfucker. Recovering from the gym, recovering from training, recovering from high volume workouts. Your immune system is the first line of defense, even nucleus overload, right? If you have a hard time replenishing your satellite cell pool, you have a hard time um, generating additional amount of nuclei, you fucked, right? Because your transcription factors are going to be limited, right? So if you have any bad polymorphism, especially with interleukin-6, that is obviously a lot more, you're going to have a hard time putting on muscle simply because, again, it's going to take you forever to recover, right? Because the immune system is the first line of defense after a workout. And obviously, I'm referring to the innate immune system, not the adaptive one. All right, next, IGF-1. IGF-1 is going to be at the top of fucking amazing, right? Because, again, IGF-1 is upstream of the mTOR pathway, right? DNA translation, ribosome creation. So if you have any negative polymorphisms, any bad mutations on your IGF-1 gene, you, my friend, are fucked. Because you're going to get some DNA transcription, you're going to get RNA transcription, but you're not going to get any translation, right? So it doesn't matter how hard you train or uh, how many steroids you inject, you're going to have a hard time um, translating uh, the you know the mRNA. So in layman terms, you're going to have a hard time increasing protein synthesis, right? And that includes IGF-1, the IGF-1 receptor, and obviously insulin, right? So all of those genes. Next, anything relating to dopamine. I'm going to also put that at fucking amazing, and I'm going to tell you why, guys. First of all, watch my videos on dopamine from like years ago. You know, it's still relevant to this day. Um, and you guys know I, I go on and on and on about dopamine and testosterone and all these things. Everyone forgets 
that training is painful, guys. Not everyone is wired the same. We all built differently, right? Not everyone can push through the pain. Not everyone can put, you know, 400 pounds on their back and squat up and down. Not, you know, training is painful. So you need to be resilient. You need to have the right polymorphisms or all the genes that are related to motivation. So that includes dopamine, dopamine receptor, obviously, because um, your body codes for dopamine receptor, not dopamine itself. Um, the, the enzymes that, you know, that help speed up the conversion from tyrosine to all the, the dopamine, all of this stuff, right? Anything that's related to your dopamine pathway, guys, you cannot have any of these negative polymorphisms, right? Because you're not going to have a lot of motivation to train, right? And keep in mind, dopamine converts to adrenaline and noradrenaline. So you're not even going to have that killer instinct. And that's why I put it in fucking amazing, right? You can't just look at the, the, the hypertrophy and and just the muscle change. You also have to look at the, the motivation and the mindset and the willpower that you need to have to be able to push through the pain and work out, right? So anything that has to do with COMT, MAOA, dopamine receptors, hopefully your parents gave you a good version of this gene. Or, you know, you're going to be a bitch for life. Next, leptin receptor. I'm actually going to put this in... I'm about to know a category. Believe it or not, man. That's Again, I'm, I'm notice this video. I'm focusing on the underrated stuff, right? Everyone, on, oh, by the way, leptin receptor. If you know my video, you already know what it does. If you don't, it's pretty much what, what controls your appetite, right? I'm just going to keep it simple, right? So anything that controls your appetite, that includes ghrelin, but let's focus on leptin. If you do not have a big appetite, it's going to be a long journey for you. Because the number one thing, the number one thing that decides how big you're going to get, how much muscle you're going to pack on, believe it or not, believe it if, oh man, I get so mad when I talk about this. It's not how you train. It's not how much volume you do or how strong you get or how, you know, uh, uh, how big of, no, it's how much you can fucking eat. Guys, eating is everything. I have so many videos on that, but it looks like I have to do more because the fitness industry is so full of shit that to this day, you have people who literally say that, oh, nutrition is, is important, but it's not the most important. Are you fucking kidding me? Right? The amount of protein you're getting in, the amount of calories you're getting in, the amount of fats, healthy fats you're getting in, the amount of omega-3s, the amount of magnesium, zinc, all of these things are the foundation of muscle hypertrophy. If you do not have a big appetite, it is virtually impossible. Not, not, oh, it's going to be hard. No, it is virtually impossible for you to get swole. So if you're skinny, you're a hard gainer, you weigh like 130, 140 pounds, you're trying to get to 170, 180, you need to have a big appetite. And there are people out there who only eat 1,000, 1,500 calories a day. And they train hard, they progressively overload, they do all out of shit, and they wonder, why am I not getting big? Where is the body going to find the building blocks? Right? The old saying, eat big to get big, still applies to the state. It's not optional, guys. You need to have a big appetite. That's why I, That's why back in the days when I was bodybuilding, I used to struggle so much because I have a shit appetite. I had to freaking drink uh, and shower and liquid shakes and shit because I just have a shitty appetite. Meanwhile, my friends were able to get as big as fucking possible. It was the complete opposite. They could eat two chicken breasts and be hungry an hour later. Right? So if you have any negative polymorphisms with your leptin receptor or ghrelin or whatever, it's going to be a long journey for you. You need a big appetite to make it in this game. I mean, just even bodybuilders on steroids, you ask them what is the most annoying part of bodybuilding, they'll tell you having to constantly eat, right? They are not. They're, they won't even tell you, oh, it's the injection, it's the training, it's the cardio. Nope, they'll be like, oh, it's the fucking food. So if professional bodybuilders who are on a shit ton of roids and have top-tier genetics still have to eat, a lot to get big. What makes you think your bum ass can get away with we're eating a cup of ramen noodles a day? But anyway, I'm, I just went off tangent because this topic infuriates me so much. Nutrition is number one. All right, next you have uh, the ACE gene. So ACE, AGT, anything that has to do with the renin angiotensin pathway. Long story short, anything that has to do with your blood pressure, I'm going to put that at okay. It is very important for hypertrophy, especially if you have the DD version of the ACE gene, right? Very important for hypertrophy because that's going to allow you to generate power. You know, again, your fight or flight system requires an increase in blood pressure. So if anything in that pathway is hindered, well, there goes your gains. Right? And the reason I put Big Ramy, mean, I'm going to make a video why, uh, but it's about people that have uh, Middle Eastern and Arabic uh, ancestry. Uh, they are the kings when it comes to the fight or flight uh, system, right? So they, are, they have the best polymorphisms when it comes to ACE and things like that. But anyway, I'm going to make a video about that. So anything that regulates your blood pressure, extremely important. Right, because ultimately, if eating is king, well, guess what? How is the nutrients and the glucose and all of that going to make it to your t target tissues? Right, blood flow, which brings us here. Same thing. This one, this one, I'm actually going to put it above. I fucking amazing. That's anything that has to do with nitric oxide synthesis. Right, 
Anything that has to do, once again, with blood flow, increasing blood flow, increasing delivery, maximizing your pump. Watch my video on the pump. This is another thing I have to make, I have to make another video about because the fitness industry is so full of shit when it comes to the pump. 90% of people just repeat and regurgitate whatever they heard on the study or from an expert, and they do not understand how important maximizing the pump is for hypertrophy. Keep in mind, I said maximizing the pump. I'm not talking about the, oh, look, I, I curled. You know, you know, I did a few reps, and look, I feel a little pump. No, maximizing the pump, the skin stretching, burning pump, so important for hypertrophy. I have a whole video on that. Check it out, and I'm gonna make a new one with even more evidence because the bullshit just keeps coming back. So, and this is where this gene comes in, right? Nitric oxide synthase, also VGF. In fact, over ninety-three percent of the variance, you know, in between people when they work out, you know, who gets big, fast, or whatever, is linked to blood flow. Is that a coincidence? And that's whether you're natty or enhanced. So maximizing blood flow is key, guys. So if you're insulin resistant, because insulin also plays a role in uh, increasing blood flow, or you, you know, you're know deficient in any of the enzymes that maximize blood flow, you're going to have a hard time packing on size. Next, the NYH gene and PPO alpha, pretty much anything that has to do with how many fast switch muscles you have. I'm going to put that in fucking amazing. Again, the reason I'm not putting it at the top is because you don't need a lot of fast switch muscles to actually, you know, get big. But if you want to be a top tier bodybuilder or you want to look like a fucking beast, you definitely need that, right? So that's why I'm putting it in fucking amazing, right? So anything that has to do with having a lot of type 2A and some type 2B muscle fibers, right? So that's obviously going to be helpful for putting on muscle uh, and obviously for sprinting and football and all the athletic sports. So try to make sure, well, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it, but hopefully pray that your parents gave you the good version of the MYH and PPO alpha variants and things like that. Next, actin in three, same thing, fucking amazing, right? You gotta, again, watch my video on black genetics and why black people put on muscle faster and why they, you know, dominate sprinting and blah, blah, blah. I already go into details, but if you have the shitty, the reason I'm putting fucking amazing instead of I'm about to know is because maybe your parent, your mom gave you, you know, the bad gene and your dad gave you the good gene. So if you have RX, you fine, you're still gonna put on a lot of muscle um, in a relatively, uh, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. But if you XX, it's going to be a long journey for you, right? Because remember, that means you're missing actin in three, right? You, you, you're actually deficient in actin in three. So this is a structural element of your muscles. That's like building a house and you're missing, you know, I don't know, iron, steel or wood or whatever. It's obviously, you know, not, not going to be on a strong foundation. So if you have the bad version of the actin in three, but, you know, again, let's say your mom gave you the bad version, your dad gave you the good version, you should be fine, right? You know, you should be able to put on muscle. But like I say, it's going to take you longer because... Actin-3 also plays a role in recovery and, you know, protecting your muscle from excessive protein breakdown. It's not just about generating force. It has a lot of other functions. So, fucking amazing category. Ah, oh, shit. Let me look at the timer. Fuck, how long is this video? Oh, shit. 14 minutes. I gotta hurry up. All right. Last but not least, the androgen receptor gene. I'm about to nut. Guys, that is by far the most important gene. If you're male, obviously when it comes to packing on size. If you take any drugs that block the androgen receptor, or if you're born with a mutation, right, where you have maybe long repeats, so you don't have a very sensitive androgen receptor, you are fucked. Go find another career. You can still work out. You're still going to make a little bit of gains, right? Because your body's still going to try to, you know, uh, give you some gains through the estrogen receptor beta, you know, like this, wrong, you know, things like that. Your body can still find other ways. But don't even try to go into bodybuilding or, you know, you know, or to compete. Because as a natty, your gains are going to suck. And even when you get enhanced, when, when you start hopping on steroids, because you want to be Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, your gains are going to suck. The androgen receptor is at the bottom. In fact, I'm going to make a whole separate video on the androgen receptor. I have in the past, but YouTube does not recommend the old video, so I'm going to make a new one. But hopefully, you have the good version and the good polymorphisms of the androgen receptor gene, right? Ideally, you have short repeats. The downside is, um, first, let's look at the good side. Yeah, you're going to put on muscle fast because, again, the androgen receptor is a DNA transcription factor, right? For the nerds out there, you guys know what I'm talking about. The other guys, long story short, that's what kickstarts the muscle growth process, right? You cannot have mTOR activity. You cannot have RNA translation if you do not have DNA transcription. Right? That's when your body goes to the DNA, goes to your genes, and copy the genetic material so that it can paste it, right? So if your androgen receptor is fucked, a lot of your hypertrophy pathways, even even your ability to control myostatin is going to be inhibited, right? Because the androgen receptor helps your body produce phytostatin, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, I'm going to make a whole video about that to go into details. But please pray to fucking Zeus that you have the good version of the androgen receptor, right? 
Everything revolves around the AR. Psalms, testosterone, DHT, whatever the fuck you take, even if you're natty. And to make it worse, you only have one copy of this motherfucker, if you're a boy. You only have one copy of this gene. So if it's bad, you are fucked. All right, but anyway, guys, I hope this video helps. Sorry it went on for too long. You guys know I'm a nerd about topics like that. I could I could talk for an hour about hypertrophy. I love this shit. Genes, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I hope this video helps, guys. Um, I might make a part two, depending on how interested you guys were in this one, to cover the rest of the genes that um, play a role in hypertrophy. But until then, guys, see you in the comment section. I'm out. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Little Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy this shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.